All right, whether the FBI gets involved in a new investigation of uh, Judge Kavanaugh, it's, it's up to the FBI, of course, but really the one who pulls the trigger on that would be the President of the United States. So far, no indications that the President is open to doing that or thinks it's necessary. We've told you already that member staffers of the Judiciary Committee uh, have met with principal players and witnesses, we're told, uh, to try to come together with a, a background they can get for Dr. Ford herself. Now, Democrats on that committee opted not to participate in that. The read on all of this with Sean Spicer, best selling author as well, a former White House press secretary. Um, Sean, where is this going? What do you think? Where's it going? Uh, I think ultimately Kavanaugh gets confirmed right now. This is a, a temporary political play. Um, look, they've, they've known about these allegations for 45 minutes. Uh, Senator Feinstein herself sat with Kavanaugh in a private meeting, clearly didn't address this. In this current environment... It, 45 it, days or... Well, I mean, they, they, the, the letter was delivered to her by Congresswoman Anna Eshoo. She knew about this. She met with him privately, failed to address it then, failed to share it with any of the other committee members. Look, Neil, I, I think that any woman that has the courage to stand forward and say that, that there was uh, impropriety, assault, or anything that else was, uh, deserves a lot of credit and should be afforded the respect and dignity of, someone who, of, of anyone who comes forward with that. That being said, at the same time, uh, there has to be uh, uh, evidence that someone did something wrong. Every, uh, per, in the case of Judge Kavanaugh, there's no evidence so far that's come forward that shows that he was at the party that anything did happen. The corroborating witnesses that she cite have said under oath that it didn't happen. He has a spotless record. There's no one else that has come forward to do this. Um, and I think that they've given every uh, opportunity for her to testify or participate or share her story publicly or privately or in whatever context makes her feel comfortable. That's what should be done, uh, done to anybody who alleges something like this. It has been done. But at some point, you need to move forward. And uh, I would urge the Senate um, to, to go forward with their vote. Senator Grassley has been unbelievably accommodating um, in making sure that anything... So to that go she, forward with their vote after... Absolutely. The, after Look, there's no question he is a, he's an unbelievably qualified jurist. He will make a great addition to the Supreme Court. Um, when the charges came forward, I think everyone on the Republican side said, stop, let's make sure that this woman has her, t has her opportunity to share her story and the facts uh, surrounding these allegations. They've done that. So the FBI, so the, I understand that the, the president would have to okay something like I think, but I, I could be wrong. I, I don't. Well, see there's no statute. That. There's no so, statute of limitations in Maryland. The, right. the Maryland, the Bethesda Department of uh, Police Department, or the Maryland Police Department could look into it. There are no statute of limitations. But the FBI would essentially sure, but but listen, be a criminal. Event. The FBI would just look into this and, and, and talk to the witness, do what sure. the committee apparently is doing now. Correct. Yeah. And and let's look at the facts. I mean, I'm no law invest a law enforcement investigator, uh, but at the end of the day, this woman can't identify when the party was, where it was. The the individuals that she said that were surrounding it both denied that it ever took place. So at some point, I don't know how much of an investigation you need to do when you can call in everyone you want to. If you don't know where it happened, when it happened, and everybody that you cite say that it never happened, I'm not sure what more there is to investigate about something that allegedly occurred 36 years ago. But some of the wayward Republicans, or at least were like Susan Collins, for example, who wanted to hear from Dr. Ford, and now she will have that opportunity. She was even exasperated by Dr. Ford's constant delays. I don't know if I'll testify. Hearing from her lawyer, I don't know if she'll testify. Now, if she does testify, does that put added pressure on the Susan Collinses and others, even a Jeff Blake, uh, who, who have been demanding uh, that it was only fair to hear from the accuser? Are they potential flips in this? Well, I think obviously those have always been the swing votes well before this ever came forward. Um, but at some point, I think, like everybody else, they, they should have an opportunity to hear her should she choose right. to do so. And if they believe her, uh, or if she presents credible evidence, that's up to them to decide which way to go. But so far, again, when the allegations are something happened 36 years ago, I can't tell you where it happened, uh, when it happened, oh, oh. Um, then it, I think I, I would have a hard time saying we're going to deny somebody who's eminently qualified for the Supreme Court to not do it based on something that there is no corroborating evidence. The president's uh, been very restrained. He has. I think, do you what, think that will continue? I do. Um, because I think the president knows what's at stake. He understands. Um, and obviously, Kavanaugh's been very engaged with, uh, with the White House, and everybody around there understands that uh, he's clearly expressed to them that he doesn't remember ever being at this party. The president has um, also said, I would hear this woman out. I'm paraphrasing. Right, and I think that's here. fantastic. Yeah. The president's done a, a phenomenal job both in terms of his pick. So you fork. think if the president weren't impressed with how 
Uh, the president, look, the, the president, look, that he would change his mind. His gut, ex, his gut instincts on stuff like this is spot on. He knows when someone's overstayed their welcome, whether or not they're going to do it, and he understands how qualified Kavanaugh is. That's why he chose him in the first place. And I think all you have to do is to look in someone's heart and understand that you have what 65 women that have worked for him, women that have dated him, everybody to a T has come out and saying what a great individual this is. The people who worked with him say what a great jurist he is. So from the man as a person and from the jurist as a professional, he's come off almost impeccable. So in the meantime, looking at the heat of battle, do you ever miss being right in it? No. <laughs> okay, one of the... Not one day. I want to no. I, that. I, I, love, I, I, I love engaging over a table, yeah. more so than a podium. <laughs> John Spicer, thank you.